Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the ECWF 30 day anomaly charts for uh, Europe for the uh, next month. This takes us uh, into August and of course had a very hot and dry uh, summer across northern and northwestern parts of Europe over the uh, past few uh, weeks has been a really hot first half to uh, summer. We'll see whether this is expected to continue in uh, the next uh, four weeks. Of course, southern and uh, southeast parts of Europe, it's been a lot cooler and a lot more unsettled there. That's where the uh, low pressure has tended to be in the east and the southeast of Europe. Also, parts of Western Russia as well have had some quite cool and uh, wet weather this summer, while the northwest has tended to be hotter and drier. Have a look and see what's going to be taking uh, place in the next month if the ECDF is right in the moment. Just to say that day's second video, we'll have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days in detail. That takes us towards the latter stages of July. Using the Hungarian uh, Met Office uh, website for this, so uh, you can find the link to the Hungarian Met Office on um, the links page. So we start off with the uh, European temperature anomaly for uh, the next week. This is taking us from the 16th through to the 22nd of uh, July. So let's start up across Scandinavia. Very hot week to come for week one, which is kind of like week 29 of the year, but it's week one for the forecast time that we're interested in. Very hot week coming up across Scandinavia, especially northern parts of Scandinavia, with temperatures up to uh, 10 degrees above average uh, there. Most parts of Scandinavia coming out uh, kind of like free to uh, sort of nine degrees above average, a really warm week, say at least hot week up in the north of Europe. Now for the UK and Ireland, we're coming out with another warmer than average week as well. It's been the case throughout this summer so far. I don't think we've had a cold and average week so far this summer. It doesn't look like we're going to have a cold of an average week in the week ahead either. Temperatures and anomalies have lowered a little bit compared to what they were uh, a week or two back. But even so, we're between around three, uh, between around one and three degrees uh, above average, really, for much of the UK and Port Island too. It's a warm scene across uh, these west, upper west parts of Europe as well, which so is France, uh, Belgium, Holland, into Germany, up to Denmark as well. We've got temperature anomalies there. Uh, between around uh, 1 and 3 degrees above average. So generally it remains a very warm scene across the north and the west of Europe. Warmest temperatures are normally hottest temperature anomalies to average are across Scandinavia. Now across southern Europe, as has been the case throughout much of summer, it's a bit of a different scene. So uh, southern France, Spain, Portugal coming out uh, with below average temperature anomalies. They're cooler than average temperature anomalies. Bear in mind, it's high summer, so, I mean, it is going to be very hot across Spain and Portugal in any case in the week. It's just about to be anomaly to average. It's a little bit uh, cooler than average in the week ahead. Uh, we go through the central basin of the Mediterranean to all of the holiday uh, sort of hot spots like the Balearic Islands, Corsica, Sardinia. Temperatures there and up to the Côte d'Azur in the south of France. The temperature anomalies are a little bit warmer than average, actually. So much of a med, it uh, looks like it's quite a warmish scene uh, in the week ahead. And then over towards Italy, we find that the temperature anomaly across Italy is close to average across the Asiatic to uh, the Balkans and down into the southeast of Europe. It's cooler than average in those areas. So the southeast of Europe remains quite cool. Although Greece has actually warmed up a bit was quite a, uh, quite a cool early part of summer across Greece, but now the temperature only has gone warmer than average. Nevertheless, the coolest uh, temperature only is to average in the southeast of Europe and the warmest uh, remain in the northwest of Europe. Precipitation-wise, we look like this. So where it's warmest, it's also driest, much as Scandinavia coming out with a very dry week. That's as the high pressure is uh, sitting over them. Uh, down to Germany, uh, Denmark, Belgium, Holland, to northern France. Again, drier than average conditions for those areas. UK and Ireland coming out with another drier than average week as well. Down towards southern 
And Eastern Europe, so there's a swathe of more uh, unsettled conditions, wetter than average conditions across the eastern part of Europe over towards the Black Sea, uh, also down into southern parts of Russia, looks notably wet uh, just there, down towards the Black Sea. And then over towards the uh, Mediterranean, towards Italy, we find it's a little bit wetter than average there. Also around the Pyrenees to uh, southern France, again, Côte d'Azur area coming out a little bit wetter than average in those areas too. So it still looks as though it's a broad setup we've had throughout the summer in the week have with the north and west hottest and driest, the south and the east tending to be coolest and wettest. But bear in mind, pre Mediterranean will still be hot uh, because it's high summer. Then we go through to uh, week Two, which takes us from the 23rd through 29th of July. The last full week of July is looking like this. And it looks very warm to hot across much of uh, northern Europe. So again, Scandinavia through towards the far northwest of Russia coming out uh, substantially hotter than average. Again, temperature normally are between 3 and 6 degrees above average. Most of Germany, France, Denmark, sort of Belgium, Holland, again coming out with a much hotter than average week. Um, it's a bit warmer actually this last week of July in the UK as well, especially England and Wales. Looks like we have quite a hot week uh, there with again temperature normally around 3 to, three to 6 degrees above average widely across England and Wales uh, and 1 to 3 degrees above average for Scotland and Ireland. So the northwest remains, and um, the north and west of Europe remains, uh, again, really quite hot. Down in the south, uh, south east of Europe, it's cooler uh, there. So for the Mediterranean, temperatures are closer to average. Uh, southern parts of Italy coming out a bit cooler than average. Western parts of Spain, Portugal coming out cooler than average. And over into the Balkans, down towards Greece and the Black Sea, uh, temperature anomalies there are cooler than average. So coolest in the south, warmest in the north. Anomalies to average, remember, it will still be hot through the Mediterranean. Uh, then we have the... Uh, Precipitation anomaly from the 23rd to 29th of July, with again much of northern Europe suggested to be uh, drier than average. So you can see where the precipitation is sitting. Notice where the high pressure is sitting, I should say. Notice for the UK and uh, western parts of France. The precipitation only there is going closer to average. This is a very hot week, but it does look as though there's more precipitation around as well. So possibly indicative a chance of thunderstorms um, for the UK, for Ireland, possibly for uh, western parts of France as well. Could be some thundery weather there. But the wettest weather, again, it's down in the southeast of Europe from sort of southern Italy over the Adriatic in towards um, the Balkans and then going over towards the Black Sea and down to Russia, we uh, down to Greece, I should say, and also up to Russia up here, we find that, uh, again, it's these areas that have the uh, wettest anomalies to average. So the southeast remains quite wet through to the end of July, southeast of Europe, the northwest remains pretty dry. That's how week three is looking. This is taking us into the start of August. It goes from the 30th of July through to the 5th of August. Uh, no real change. So again, Scandinavia down to uh, Central Europe, down to Germany, coming out uh, very substantially hotter than average or warmer than average in those, re uh, in those regions. The UK and Ireland, warmer than average as well. It, it has cooled down a little bit compared to week two. Nevertheless, we're still seeing temperature rise between one and three degrees above average have to go down to uh, Mediterranean from the southwest of Europe over to southeast of Europe to find those temperature anomalies uh, so, uh, below sort of average, um, although still, of course, very warm. Uh, this is how the uh, precipitation anomaly is looking. So again, the southeast of Europe comes out a little bit wet and average. You've ever seen this weakening uh, now, but the southeast Europe comes out a little bit wet and average. The northwest of Europe comes out, uh, or hints of being a little bit uh, drier than average in those regions. The further out we go, uh, the weaker the signal uh, becomes. But broadly, you can see that still the same kind of idea is there, which is for the high pressure to be up here and then the low pressure to be down. Uh, there, high pressure in the northwest, low pressure in the southeast. And then finally, we go through to week four. This takes us from the 6th through to the 12th of August. It remains a warm scene across much of Europe. The hot, warm summer continues across the vast majority of central, northern, and uh, western Europe. The coolest anomalies to average uh, continue to be down 
in the southeast uh, and the south of Europe. Precipitation wise, we're seeing again it's weaker, but still just about hinting at the idea that there's going to be quite a bit of high pressure somewhere around here, and then low lower pressure is likely uh, to be down uh, there. But again, as we go further on, the signal does become weaker. So no real change. The long, hot summer of 2018 set to continue if the ECM WF is right into August for much of Central and Northern Europe. The wettest uh, conditions and most unsettled conditions and the coolest conditions to average continue to be um, forecast to be in the southeast of Europe, uh, whereas Central, Northern, Western and Northwestern parts of Europe uh, look very warm to hot in the week ahead, uh, or in the month ahead, I should say, in the next 30 days. No change, and uh, we're just going to wait and see how long this is going to go on for. Eventually, there will be a change. Eventually, Northern Europe will cool down and turn wetter, but when is it going to happen, and will the models pick up on it before it happens? That will be uh, very interesting to see how that plays out. But as far as the ECM is concerned, there's no change in the next month. It remains very hot and dry and very warm uh, for much of central, northern, northwestern Europe, the coolest and wettest weather in the southeast. Come back later on when we'll have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days, and that will be with you on the homepage. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.